Good evening, everybody. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the last day of Ibav Ibero American Voices here in Delhi. Although we have guests from different parts of the world, and today it's going to be a, a poetry reading event that you have seen already on the Facebook. And we have uh, four very interesting poets from different parts of the world. We have two people, two poets from India, Ranjit Oskore from Bombay, and we have Avner Parian from Meghalaya, and we have Carlos Soto Roman from Chile, and Martin Rodriguez Gaona from Peru. Um, and all of them, they, they will be here today presenting their poetry uh, to us. And like every, almost like every reading, what we did, they'll read in their languages and uh, we will get their translation on the chat window. And I think everyone, almost everybody here today understands Spanish. If you don't, sometimes if you don't get the read, the, the translations, you would be able to, to listen to the original Spanish. And I thank, again, I thank the Embassy of Mexico and Instituto Cervantes for organizing this uh, lovely festival. And so we must start now the reading. I'll first call Avner uh, Pariot to, to read his poems. Avner is is a poet and writer based in Shillong, Meghalaya. He writes in Kasi and in English. Kasi right. is a language that is that is spoken in Meghalaya. And we all know, and those who don't know, Meghalaya in the colonial times, it was called the Scotland of India. And because of its weather. And, and we when we everybody here in in the in other parts of India we suffer, they do not. They don't have some other, and and they have a they have winter and and uh, chillier winter maybe. There are two three versions of winter there, rainy winter, a little drier winter, and and things like that. Um, <clears throat> he his literally uh, his literary work has been published in a number of well known publications like Economic and Political Weekly, Scroll. He was awarded an India Foundation for Arts grant and was uh, was a literature across frontiers artist in residence in 2017, where he participated in, in Poetry Connections India Wells uh, program. And <clears throat> he contributes to a number of Shillong best publications and is currently working on an exclusive Kasi poetry collection to be released later this year. His latest, latest collaborative collection, Open Me, My Shadow, with the Welsh poet Rhys Trimble, is out on Poetrywala. And that is, that is the result, that is the, the, the fruit of that stay in that port, port in residence in, in Wales, in Poetry Connection India Wales project. Uh, so I would, I would request Avnar to, to read his poems. Thank you, Avnar, for coming to this festival. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, everyone who's watching this, it's a real honor uh, to be part of this panel. Um, I think you missed rainy season. We, we have a lot of rain before any other part of India. We, yes, of course. No, I, I did not I say that you have, a, you have a, a rainy winter throughout the year and yeah. maybe a less yeah. rainier winter. Summary, yeah, summery monsoon and wintry monsoon, something like that. It rained okay. a lot, especially this year has been horrible. Just so much rain. I'm growing um, fungi for my ears. So I'm going to read to you um, three poems, which are all in Khasi. Um, the translation, I hope, will be up. Otherwise, it will not make any sense. Yeah, it will be up now. Okay. So the first poem is called, the English translation is, uh, the title I've chosen is The Warlock's Son. Khon Shim Kaniya. Kaniya Kani Kabha Jong Pi. Ba Ya Kani Kabha. 
Don ba wan ai hanga nin ha office. Ngan ai pat ha pi. It clear ya ka nda nga la yam. Pen roi ya ka. Wat kelet pan ai snam. Bat melo. Kun kan sma tamakum kasbo kan ai so. Wat ju ting ya ki babish ni. Mde bengi tu na ki. Mde bengi tu na ki ya ka la wei jung ki kun jung ki. Am day bungi tu naki ya kalau wei jungki kon jungki kon jungki. Empa. Ken mau pad day bandon ki beruspa pad kumjuru ki bedok. Ni day bandshim namar ba ni don kam bandshim. Kadai kabenta jungi bandshim. Kum hennen. Uwan uwe uma, bat udon kam ya nga, bat u ai, bat nga, nga day ban shim. Bat kum ta ka patay ka tulun. Kam day ka basniyo. Kum ba kano ki brew, kum ba kano ma pi kon. Ko pa pi hap in start ya la day ya karukom jo ka patay. Ngan sa patay kon. Ngan sa hikay pa jo nga. So that's the end of the first poem. Um, so I'll, I'll move on straight into the second one. The second one, um, it's called Kublai Atrai, which in English is um, Thank God. So it's a little bit of a sarcastic poem uh, about what we should be thanking God for basically the misery of others. Kublai atrai bangi don ginom trai ki ban ap yang ni med pat singi. Kublai baki nur ban ee ee la ki shnong na ma ka jingduk ka bae ee ki shasol. Kublai ee ki brew ki baha ban duk bangin ruspa. Namar ba klam ki kiti ki kijan, ka do ka snam jung ki, ka sor kan saray ko abhe, ngi ai kublay. Kublay ye ki kna nong kendong, ki bahap kam kpa kam kme ye ki nong wei, ye ki kong ki bahap iet ye ki kun jung ki wei. Ha sor shalong, ha sor shalong, ale wan lut sha sor shalong. Kabun kejeng iet, wan shim kat petam. Kejeng iet bapair, bakala, bakensha. Um, uh, I will continue with the last one. If you have any questions, you can ask. I guess. Um, <coughs> Ngayok sengau badan baperta. Tama ngamyo iya ki. Ngasih yuk sengau ya laka kerteng. Tama ka jengut ke um uru ben ula o. Ngamyo iya. Syai kini kisur kinyalam yang ha. Ngin syutur rumah. Ngan hun. Mendan Google Map dan GPS kapan lam lenti. Ni yo ban pet kat sebangi mon. Tada mendon mau lenti hoi nganja kemenor kan ngui im yang a usum put unra yang a seri mayan tangba kajing mud ru kan lat par but mendon su ban set ya ka. Thank you. Uh, those are three poems which I have, um, which I have read out. If you have any questions, do, are we taking questions or no? Yeah, we'll take questions. Yeah, we will later. take questions a little later. Uh, yeah. And after, after the reading, we'll have we'll a sure. session for, for the listeners. Uh, thank you, Abna. Thank you, Abna. For thank you. Thank you. Poems. I hope everybody could see the uh, and translations. The translations. And and what you can do, Avna, like there is yeah. a, 
the, the poems that you read can you read one of them uh, in english translation okay since uh, yeah because i i kind of sped through them then i <laughs> no no okay. no that's a, it's a, the sound okay i'll like... i'll do the first one okay mm-hmm. um i'll do the first one the warlock's son son take this this is your role carry its burden it was given to me yesterday in the office i'm giving it to you now it is yours to bear when i die make it grow don't forget to feed it blood and salt sun it'll smell but like shit it's fertile it'll bear fruit don't be afraid of jealous people it's not that we're taking from them it's not that we're taking from them the future of their children it's not that we're taking from them the future of their children and their children after no my love there must always be rich people and poor people we take because we need to take it is our part to take like yesterday in the office a man came and he needed me he gave and i had to take and that is how the globe rolls it is not evil as people accuse as you accuse my son you must study the ways of this world i will teach you my love i will be there to teach you thank you um the connection is that in our culture there are some um uh there are these warlocks which are called mensho no so i've kind of married that in with contemporary issues of corruption and all that so these warlocks are supposed to drain people they they worship a kind of a snake deity and mm-hmm. so they take they take people's blood and then the snake deity drains them of their life force eventually over time kind of like a cancer eating away at them so i've kind of used uh that warlock they actually not warlocks but that's the closest word i can i could and it had a cool ring to it anyway so that's the closest word i i could find which had some connection with my own culture here mm-hmm. thank you yeah thank you Abner. thanks thank you yeah. so much lovely you we get questions uh, we'll take questions a little later <clears throat> now i'll move to uh, I'll, i'll move to carlos soto roman Carlos Soto Roman when I I first heard about him it was from Timo Berger Timo Berger we all we all know him like he's a curator he he participated a couple of weeks back in that lovely round table and he is the one who organizes Latinale the only spanish uh, language poetry festival in germany um and and the rest of europe maybe and <clears throat> and he's he's a pioneer of this these concepts and he he talked very highly about him carlos soto roman is a very experimental writer he he mixes images poetry and and real text documents from archives to construct his poems he's poet and translator he has published haiku minero in chile project reclassified antuco that's that's the that's a very uh, ambitious book of poems i must say and and uh, antuco is co-authored with carlos cardani parra in 2019 common sense make now books los angeles california 2019 nature of objects um pamina press uk 2019 and 11 and that won the municipal Uh, poetry prize of santiago in 2018 he actively collaborates in some in several poetry projects and music including bands radio magallanes and sonora guantanamo uh, he is the author of the first full translation into spanish of holocaust by charles resnikov um and that's that translation talks a lot about his interest in in many things today uh he i i now invite carlos to read his work 
Thank you so much uh, for the invitation and, um, and to the Cervantes Inst Institute for organizing this lovely reading. It's uh, quite an honor to be sharing this uh, Zoom platform uh, with poets like Abner, Ranjit, and Martin. Um, I'm going to be reading uh, from Common Sense, this book that was published in, in, in LA, but I'm going to read the, the Spanish version of it. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to show some images from this other book from uh, Chile Project Reclassified uh, that is uh, basically um, erasures uh, from like documents, uh, uh, declassified documents from the CIA. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share uh, that video and start the reading in Spanish. Can you see the, um, the video? Okay. From Common Sense. Dice sí, dice no, dice tal vez, dice no sé, dice quizás, dice no creo, dice probablemente, dice mañana, dice pasado mañana, dice nunca. Dice no señales blasfemias, dice no muestres desnudez licenciosa, dice no menciones el tráfico ilegal, dice no infieras perversión sexual, dice no muestres esclavitud blanca, dice no representes mestizaje, dice no menciones enfermedades venerias, dice no muestres partos de hecho o en silueta, dice no representes los órganos sexuales de los niños, dice no ridiculices el clero, dice no ofendas a ninguna nación, dice no ofendas a ninguna raza, dice no ofendas a ningún credo. Dice libertad de expresión, dice libertad de culto, dice libertad de vivir sin penurias, dice libertad de vivir sin miedo. Dice libertad de pensamiento, dice quinta libertad, dice libertad económica. Dice libertad política, dice libertad religiosa, dice libertad de prensa, dice libertad de drogas, dice libertad de armas, dice libre consumo, dice existencia libre, dice libertad del hambre, dice libertad de conciencia, dice libertad de contrato, dice combatiente por la libertad, dice el meta índice de libertad, dice ley de libertad de información, dice libertad positiva, dice libertad negativa, dice tierra y libertad, dice capitalismo y libertad, dice liberalismo económico, dice mercantilismo, dice monopolio, dice laissez faire. Dice libertad científica, dice libertad académica, dice libertad de prensa, dice libre albedrío, dice crimen de pensamiento. Dice puede considerarse objetable, dice puede considerarse dañino, dice puede considerarse sensible, dice puede considerarse inconveniente. Dice pánico de 1819, dice pánico de 1837, dice pánico de 1857, dice la larga depresión, dice pánico de 1873, dice pánico de 1884, dice pánico de 1893, dice pánico de 1907, dice el desplome de Wall Street de 1929, dice la gran depresión, dice crisis del petróleo, dice el lunes negro, dice crisis de ahorros y préstamos, dice crisis financiera asiática de 1997, dice crisis económica argentina, Dice recesión de finales de la década del 2000, dice crisis energética de la década del 2000, dice crisis de la industria automotriz, dice crisis de las hipotecas de alto riesgo, dice burbuja inmobiliaria de Estados Unidos, dice corrección del mercado inmobiliario, dice crisis bancaria irlandesa, dice crisis financiera rusa, dice crisis financiera de Islandia, dice fondo, dice monetario, dice internacional. Dice Le Tiers Monde, dice el tercer mundo, dice países en vía de desarrollo, dice países subdesarrollados, dice países no desarrollados, dice países de la periferia, dice países más pobres, dice naciones no industrializadas, dice malas tierras, dice patio trasero, dice ellos. Dice common baby, dice let's do the twist, dice common baby, dice let's do the twist, dice take me by, dice my little hand, dice and go like this. 
Dice la plaga de Atenas, dice la peste Antonina, dice la plaga de Justiniano, dice peste bubónica, dice muerte negra, dice la gran plaga de Londres, dice la tercera pandemia, dice sarampión, dice viruela, dice tosferina, dice influenza, dice sífilis, dice cólera, dice tifus, dice tuberculosis, dice lepra, dice malaria, dice fiebre amarilla, dice el sudor inglés, dice fiebre hemorrágica viral, dice estafilococcus aureus, dice superbacteria, dice gripe aviar, dice gripe porcina, dice VIH, dice SARS, dice H1N1, dice H1N2, dice H2N1, dice H3N1, dice H3N2, dice H2N3, dice H5N1, dice COVID-19. Dice enfermedad cardíaca, dice cáncer, dice enfermedad respiratoria crónica, dice accidentes cerebrovascular, dice accidentes, dice enfermedad de Alzheimer, dice diabetes, dice influenza, dice nefritis, dice suicidio, dice COVID-19. Dice cuál es su nombre, dice cuántos años tiene, dice es usted hombre o mujer, dice casado o soltero, dice cuál es su ocupación, dice es capaz de leer y escribir, dice cuál es su país de origen, dice cuál es su raza, dígame el nombre y la dirección de un familiar de su país de origen, dice cuál es su destino final en Estados Unidos, dice quién pagó su pasaje, dice cuánto dinero trae consigo, dice ha estado en Estados Unidos antes, dice se encontrará con un familiar suyo aquí en Estados Unidos, dice quién, dice ha estado en una prisión, Dice, ha estado en un asilo. Dice, ha estado en una institución para el cuidado de los dementes. Dice, es usted polígamo. Dice, es usted anarquista. Dice, viene a Estados Unidos a trabajar. Dice, ¿dónde trabajará? Dice, ¿cuál es el estado de su salud? Dice, ¿es usted deforme o lisiado? Dice, ¿qué tan alto es? Dice, ¿de qué color son sus ojos? Dice, ¿de qué color es su cabello? Dice, ¿tiene alguna marca de nacimiento? Dice, ¿dónde nació? Dice, ¿quién fue el primer presidente de los Estados Unidos? Dice, ¿cuáles son los colores de nuestra bandera? Dice, ¿cuántas franjas tiene nuestra bandera? Dice, ¿cuántas estrellas? Dice, ¿qué es el 4 de julio? Dice, ¿qué es la constitución? Dice, ¿cuáles son los tres poderes de nuestro gobierno? Dice, ¿qué presidente liberó a los esclavos? Dice, ¿puede nombrar las 13 colonias originales? Dice, ¿quién firma los proyectos de ley? Dice, ¿quién es el actual presidente? Dice, ¿cómo se llama el himno nacional de los Estados Unidos? Dice Tutti Frutti, dice Oh Rudy, dice Tutti Frutti, dice Oh Rudy, dice Tutti Frutti, dice Oh Rudy, dice Hawab Bablu, dice Hawab Bambu. Dice la playa, dice la playa, dice debajo, dice debajo de la playa, dice bajo él, dice él, dice los adoquines, dice bajo los adoquines, dice la playa, dice debajo del adoquín la playa, dice debajo de la playa, dice playa adoquín, dice él la, dice debajo, dice bajo adoquín playa, dice el adoquín, dice bajo la playa, dice playa adoquín, dice bajo, dice debajo, dice bajo el adoquín, dice la playa, dice bajo playa adoquín la él, dice el adoquín, dice la playa, Dice bajo el adoquín, dice la playa, dice sule pavé, dice la playa, dice sin justicia, dice no hay paz, dice ni perdón, dice ni olvido. Muchas gracias. Thank you. That was indeed lovely. Thank you, thank you, Carlos, for this lovely, uh, energetic uh, poems. I think everybody could download. I hope everybody could download the the translations that were given in, in the chat window. Um, as I told you, he he mixes many things in his poetry in this daily experience. Uh, <clears throat> now, I would move to uh, Ranjit Oskore. Uh, Ranjit is, first of all, let me introduce Ranjit. I, I, I had the pleasure to, to meet him uh, at a poetry festival in Spain. Since then, we, are, um, we became friends and we, we started sharing the likings of poetry and his likings in poetry. Um, here we have today Martin Rocco as well, who, who shares the same city where I met Ranjit that was in that was in Soria. And Ranjit is a poet translator, cultural theorist, and curator, art curator based in Bombay. 
His seven collections of poetry include Vanishing Acts, Penguin 2006, Central Time, Penguin Viking 2014, Jonah Well, Penguin Hamish Hamilton 2018, and most recently, The Atlas, Atlas of Lost Beliefs, in, published in ARC in the United Kingdom. His translations of the 14th century Kashmiri mystic Lal Diet's poetry has been published as I, Lalla, the poems of Lal Diet, uh, Penguin Classics 2011. He's the editor of Dom Morris' uh, selected poems, Penguin Modern Classics 2012, an extensively annotated critical edition. Ranjit curated India's first ever national pavilion at the Venice Biennale in 2011 and co-curated the seventh Guangzhou Biennale in 2008 with Okui eh, Envisor and Yunjin Kim. He has been honored with Saitya Academy Golden Jubilee Award and Saitya Academy Translation Award. His poems have been translated into German, Hindi, Bangla, Marathi, Irish, Gaelic, Swedish, Spanish, and Arabic. Um, now I would uh, like to call Ranjit to read his poems. Thank you so much, uh, Shabru. It's really a pleasure to be here in this marvelous context of a festival that straddles continents and languages and regions. <clears throat> and that to me as a multilingual person who writes, happens to write in one language, which is English, I find this a particularly conducive uh, environment because I believe that uh, we're all geared to being very plural in, uh, in our choices of language. So this is to me a really marvelous situation. And uh, it's an honor to be reading with friends and colleagues, Shubro, yourself, Avna, Carlos, Martin. Uh, and I'm going to begin uh, with a poem called The Churchgate Gazette, which is set in, uh, in Bombay in one of our key train stations. And then it takes off from there. And it goes like this. Last word on the subject, I promise. I walked into the train station and it was terrifying. Like nerve gas had laid the architecture out flat. The tall glass columns, bloodshot, and the booking clerks slumped over, all dead at the till. A plaster Gandhi with sulfur rimmed eyes stopped me. What a substitute for coal and why? You missed the last train, it said, he said. You missed the last and only train that was safe for a man who's left half his life behind. A straggler from a late night movie had more advice. You could so easily gag on a wine red tassel silk scarf stuffed in your mouth, he said. You could so easily gag on sour saliva or a shard of bay leaf or a letter swallowed just after the bell has rung and before the door opens. I thought of the possibilities as I left the station without a compass. Walk straight enough, said Gandhi, and you could walk into the sea. At the wharf, the sailors' wives were keening together. They were singing the last songs of the whales. I was their brother, and I had killed them with my broken harpoon and my rusted smile. Find affection, I told myself. That's fundamental. Find a voice that doesn't draw blood each time you hear it. I walked past myself. I rippled across lean men and sleek women laughing behind plate glass, their hands caught in pools of light, wine gleaming in brittle flutes. Bird song disturbs the king of incomplete lives. He wakes up in the middle of the novel he's writing in the Midnight Hotel. His eyes need shielding from the raw clarity of neon. He is back where he began with a plate of waxy grapes and a blunt silver knife on his bedside table. Break ice for me. Let me fall through stinging water in my skin of rust and flame. I've jumped from a tree that's branched into the clouds. 
it sucked up all the reality I've watered it with. Its fruits are red and wrinkled. I plunge into drowned gardens where I walked once, sinking, the water stroking my crown of leaves as it comes apart. Dark, archaic clown, dark tribune, archaic clown, I open my eyes. And I'm going to move to a poem called The Refugee Pauses in Flight, which is dedicated to a Somali novelist who's uh, a Somali origin novelist who's really been like a long distance mentor to me. I've been greatly inspired by his work, uh, Nuruddin Farah. So this is how it goes. The Refugee Pauses in Flight for Nuruddin Farah. What should I call it? this number that has no name. Countries are working hypotheses that sometimes fail. I escape from mine, my wings of flame doused, my root sketched in rumors, an alphabet of stone and diesel tapping at my ribs. Invented reasons found in a drawer of mislaid knives, never look back, not even at the veined marble columns, the coiling creepers, the rusty sea gate, the orange tree, all that you thought was you. Even the briefest glance over the shoulder could turn you to salt on a photograph. Pick up the key ring, slowed by its bunch of yellowed date tags. Where to draw the borders of the occupied city? across brain lobes that sleep while fingers twitch in spasms, across tents that shiver and capsize on a, bro on a frozen beach, across graves on which the wild basil has grown. Living among strangers, he almost forgot the names of his gods. This one's called Highway Prayer. If you're writing a fresh anthem for the one scorched island marooned in cyclone country, be sure to put in a line about burnt tires and sleeping dogs and another line on the flags, curtains, TV screens, more flags, all the shrouds the islanders are hanging up to protect themselves from the world. They need a savior. That'll be the man in the red raincoat falling through an open door. An unseen hand stops him, props him up. He blocks the door, a crucifix barring the passage of time. Time burns right through him. He clutches at his burst stomach, crouching on the sidewalk, holding fast to the creased memory of a river he once loved. In him, the shimmer is great, greater than panic, greater than the fear of flies, of stakes, of exploding shells, of ending up as roadkill. Tongue-tied, he reads this rosetta of violence, this highway across which sirens call to knotted prophets, batmen to jokers, jets to sharks. Bless me, ivories, the land pirate says. At last shiver me timbers in this place that found me empty, in this place that found me parched. I am blood, I am grief, I am the returning rocket, I am contrary to the Commonwealth, Lord of the booming antlers on a yellow signboard. Let go, he calls out, let go, craft me into this totality that never closes. And I'll end with a quieter poem. This one's called Tree Line. And it's in memory of a pioneer of avant-garde film called Stan Brackage. Tree Line. Tree rings, an absent biography Litmus of lost events, a perch to gather the rain's drumbeats, 
to begin again a sentence in dusty green, snow sutra of chained wheels on the salt road, summer japa of crickets announcing a delay in nightfall, song snagged in a flayed tree, its words rustling in a fugitive wind, marking the key from which the sun boat sails to begin again to lose your way. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> Thank you, Ranjit, for these lovely poems. They're indeed beautiful. Um, <clears throat> if you have uh, uh, have time, can can you read your the poem the poem about the, that you wrote uh, with the poem of Galib in Oh, sure, uh, the Man of Objectives. <laughs> That's one of my personal favorites. Please, if you have it with you. This is the poem in Galib's voice. Right. Right you are. Well, um, thank you. I mean, I was planning to read it, but I wasn't really sure. So there we are. <laughs> Thanks. Thank because you since me. we are in Delhi, we have to celebrate Indeed. the poem Indeed. of Delhi. <laughs> <laughs> for, for friends and colleagues elsewhere, uh, this poem is set in Delhi in 1857, in the aftermath of uh, what to us was the great uprising against... Uh, the East India Company, uh, which inaugurated British colonial rule, really. So, and it's in the voice of one of our very greatest poets, an Urdu poet called Ghalib, who also was court poet to the last Mughal emperor. So it speaks of being poet, being survivor, uh, wondering what to do next. Ghalib in the winter of the Great Revolt, Delhi, 1857. The emperor's murdered grandsons hang from the gate of peace like hushed bells and rifles drill the sentenced air. My neighbor, the flautist, slit his veins last night, burning his prayer book before he died, true to a god of subtle tones wasted on the deaf. Ghalib writes to a friend, all around us the furies ride their burning horses, it's as though Taimur had broken Delhi's walls again, his cinder-streaked soldiers heaping pyramids of skulls in the streets and the bakers for orphans to compute the profits of betrayal, the penalties of defeat. Cannon, the only thunder, writes Khalib, and no rain. Gunners waving St. George's flag have driven the nobles from their charred mansions, tethered the peasants to the surly river, the coppersmith tapping at a dead branch fills the vacant sky with the privacy of his grief. The friend with a spy at his shoulder writes back, when did you become a poet of adjectives roosting in the rafters of a broken house? Ghalib, the owl must hide in the tamarind for now, but the genies of havoc will go on furlough soon. You say your inkwell is empty, but your dry quill still claws at the fibers of the heart. A pharmacist may drug himself with lyric, Ghalib replies, and a tiger may vanish in the rainforest of his hunter's dreams. But the dry quill is a reproach, and this raw winter could be the living tomb of my song. Send paper, friend. These are the last pages of my journal. I'm writing on. Thank you. Thank you, Ranjit. This is a lovely poem that I always remember. It is like a, <clears throat> like we we I I used to call myself. I the, the only the, the aspiration of my life was to be the servant of Ghalib. Uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, we were born in different centuries, so we couldn't do that. Um, but Ranjit once reminded us that Ghalib is was contemporary to Charles Baudelaire, and that's something that we we do not really compare because Ghalib is a poet of ghazals, a form essentially a Persian form of poetry, and and Baudelaire is is for like the other modernist trends. But probably Ghalib is the first ever modernist that India mm -hmm. produced in yeah. a disguise. But but. He was really a modern boat. Uh, now I would move to, to Martin Rodriguez Gaona. Martin is, 
is a long time, long, uh, he's a friend of mine since like ages now we are friends. Uh, Marty is, is poet, essayist, translator, editor. Among his collections of poems are Dance Floor, Codex of Powers and Charms, and Madrid Circular Line. Uh, that was that won the Cáceres World Heritage Award and Co Codex of Powers and Charms that was awarded with Antonio Machado uh, Creative uh, Writing Fellowship and that, that he was awarded uh, in, in Soria. As a cultural manager at the student residence, he organized recitals and conferences with poets such as Shemes Hini, Juan Helman, and Gonzalo Rojas and edited books by Olga Orozco, Blanca Varela, Jose Angel Valente, Jaime Gil de Viedma, among others. His essay, Improving the Present, Last Spanish Poetry, Postmodernity, Humanism and Networks, was considered one of the best 10 publications of the year by Chimera magazine. His uh, work as a translator includes books by John Ashbery, John Giorno, Jack Spicer and Alice Norkley. So I would now request Martin to read his poems. And um, a few of his poems that he's going to read are there in translation, but not all of them. But we can listen to the music of, of his words. Martin. Please, it's all yours. First of all, uh, thanks Subro uh, for the invitation and also the, the Cervantes New Delhi and Mexican Embassy and especially to all the, the poets, friends, which are uh, a discovery and a privilege to, to listen to you. And it's a good sign uh, this very harsh times to find that uh, there are very strong voices that are trying to tell us something about this present. En primer lugar, gracias por la invitación a Suro, a la Embajada de México y al Instituto Cervantes de Nueva Delhi y al público a los que nos están escuchando por su por su curiosidad hacia estas voces eh, distintas y de, de gran calidad que, que, que nos prueban que, no estoy hablando de mí, eh, que nos prueban que, eh, que todavía hay algo que decir en estos tiempos eh, difíciles. Voy a empezar con un par de poemas de un libro eh, que se llama Pista de Baile, salió en el año 97. Eh, era un libro juvenil, pero a mí me tocó ser joven en una época un poco complicada. Eh, y algo de eso se, se trasluce. De cierta manera, es la, el, lo que une al libro es la, la, la rebeldía de intentar ser joven, de intentar ser feliz y vital en medio de un contexto poco propicio. Eh, el primer poema es un poema de, de amor y hay una referencia a la India, a la, a la cultura de la, de la India en su gran cinematografía, que es muy admirada en el mundo de la Meteorología y amor. No soy alguien a quien mirar. Soy un hombre para sentir y no me gusta estar solo. Así que tranquila, no pongas cara de miedo. Me tiene siempre en esta mano. Y si me acusan de hablarte solo a ti, no sabría defenderme, pero también me agradan otros mundos, aunque es difícil explicarlo. Quisiera algún día compartir un té de frambuesa y galletas de vainilla, una película hindú, dos niñas coquetas arrebatándose un polo de algodón que diga, difícil ser una mujer difícil, 
un concierto con David Byrne y Celia Cruz. También una invitación a tu cumpleaños, el de todos tus hermanos, amigos y conocidos. Es tan especial el ser tímido, estar en situaciones en las que dejas de serlo. Es como que, de pronto, poco importa estar equivocado. Y lo que es mejor, que esto a nadie le haga daño. Es el poder admitir con única certeza que en la ciudad en que vivimos, Dios acontece los sábados por la mañana, cuando llueve. El segundo poema de Pista de Baile se llama De pronto miro alrededor, es una especie de sightseeing, estaba pensando en producción, más, más, más bien night scene alrededor de la, de la ciudad y en ese contexto que les hablaba antes, que era la época del terrorismo y la hiperinflación en Perú. De pronto miro alrededor. En el punto más luminoso de la ciudad, los semáforos cambian al compás de quienes no respetan las señales de tránsito. Y no es fácil entender qué significa el transporte público si es que no aprendiste a desplazar. Alegres corazones y camionetas vomitan sonidos que embrutecen. Pero el paisaje es desconocido por pocos. Las sombras son azules y delante están los faros. Todo sentido antes que visto. Ante un taxista insomne que no sabes si va a parar. Algo te recuerda el color de unos ojos sobre las luces de los edificios en Miraflores. Y a esas alturas, súbitamente, las cosas cobran sentido. Los tíos drogados cruzando las esquinas y las calles llenándose de cierta ternura que no se agotará hasta el amanecer. Mañana temprano, en inmaculados periódicos se volveremos unas cuantas palabras de consenso sobre construcciones que caen como frutos maduros. Y la condena es poca y la angustia mucho. No es fácil entender qué significa el transporte público después de hacer el amor. Por eso regreso y me escondo en tu pequeño cuerpo, porque antes del tiempo existía el deseo, y ahora estás aquí. Entre el 97 y el 2020 han pasado cosas en el mundo y en mí, o parte ínfima de él. Y entre ellas es que ya yo no solamente soy peruano, también soy español. Un nuevo tipo de español. Y ya hay españoles de la globalización, de un origen eh, diverso, y yo reivindico ese, esa nueva, ese nuevo tipo de nacionalidad que es importante, entre otras cosas porque despierta la curiosidad por lo que se hace, se hizo y se hará en estos otros lugares de origen, como China, como China, como Chile, como la India, como Venezuela. Entonces en eso eh, he escrito un libro que acaba de ser publicado en el pretextos, en el pretextos se llama Motivos Fuera del Tiempo, Las Ruinas, que en cierta manera es mi, mi versión sobre el debacle de, de la, de la cultura humanista europea, de la que los hispanoamericanos somos periféricos, pero que es nuestra cultura también. Entonces, eh, el libro tiene distintos motivos, uno de ellos es la memoria, las ruinas de la cultura, las ruinas del amor, y entre esas ruinas de la cultura, las ruinas de la propia poesía, emblematizadas en determinadas figuras, como Helderling, como Walter Benjamin, como Walter Proust, como Ezra Pound. Y este poema evoca a Helderling y a su filiación griega 
con la madre y las musas en el mismo cine. El epígrafe dice, dulce sería dormir bajo las sombras. Felix El pasado regresa mejor y más ungido. El brillo sigue siendo un desnudo sin el calmo frescor de la noche lentamente cierra los párpados. La memoria es también un movimiento, una súbita sensación de nacibilidad e incertidumbre. Los pasos se parecen a los cantos, melífugos meandros, conciertos concéntricos, voces atroces, de pronto sublimes, por una espontánea combustión. Los dioses están vivos y son invisibles, renacen en gestos imperceptibles por un instante. Sagrado es lo efímero, compartido al punto de la comunión. Los cuerpos trascienden, las palabras se elevan, la luz inunda las olas que revientan contra las rocas. Una y otra vez estar vivos vuelve a ser un privilegio de los cielos. Otro poema en esta serie de, de homenajes. En cierto sentido, este poema es un recuerdo y una reflexión y una protesta ante el sacrificio de Walter Benjamin, pensador heterodoxo, mestizo, periféricos dentro de Europa y que intuyó eh, gran parte de, de lo que estamos viviendo ahora y quizá también la redención si es que sabemos interpretarlo y es más llevarlo a cabo que es lo, que, lo más importante lo más valiente Port Bow en Port Bow como saben fue su última estación aquí en, en España antes de que lo atraparan lo para las garras del fascismo. Por Bow, la ganancia de lo perdido. Tiene un epígrafe de Marshall Berman refiriéndose a, a su última noche, a su suicidio, que dice de haber alguien llamado a su puerta esa noche o haberlo abrazado. Por Bow, la ganancia de lo perdido. Si solo pudiera asegurar la continuidad de aquellos instantes en los que una sonrisa da sentido a todo lo que existe. Tiene que haber algo que diga que aún es posible la entrega espontánea, o que quizá ya no inocente, porque el tiempo ha concluido y en la ansiedad y en la timidez he logrado plasmar esperanzas, promesas hechas precariamente de mí mismo. El verano está a la vuelta de la esquina en aquello que aún desconocemos y que, así parece, llega alegremente a buscarnos. Quiero decir tu nombre al final del día. Y para, para terminar... un poema sobre un recorrido mítico, heroico, que es simplemente amar. Cualquiera puede entrar en el océano, pero no siempre es fácil salir de él. Me preguntaste si no tenía un poema manuscrito, aunque fuese malo. Entonces comprendí que tú también querías la versión tangible y perdurable de aquella línea confusa que en unas noches dibujé con esmero sobre el lienzo infinito e imaginario de tu espalda. El resplandor lunar pasando con lentitud, sin sentido, 
sobre la hoja en blanco, subespecie eternitatis. Debo, por lo tanto, seguir paso a paso la vieja doctrina, recuperar cada gesto, cada aroma, cada espasmo, entregado fugazmente cuando decías que no podías o que no se debía hacer. Tócame de nuevo, Carmen. Cántame en la boca que Eurídice. Los poemas no se escriben solos. ¿Ves? En este asunto, lo interesante siempre surge cuando ya lo has dado todo por perdido. Pronto, ambos nos haremos expertos en el laberinto doble de palabras pétreas y una frágil memoria. Civilizadamente, protegidos por la distancia o la profundidad del océano, evocaremos el deseo de amanecer desnudos y abrazados al pie de una ventana. Pero, ¿quién sabe? Quizá algún día regresemos a esa orilla, húmedos y exhaustos. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Martin, for these lovely poems. Um, now I would like to uh, open the floor for questions. To if anybody has any question, can send the questions via chat, mm -hmm. and and the poet would get it. You can send it to Marty as administrator via chat and he will send it to the forum. The chat is disabled. Now, now you can. It's open now. Thank you. You, you can speak even, you can ask the question directly, opening the mic. Everybody can now ask the questions opening their mic directly. First of all, want to thank you for such fantastic events just, and, and all the readers. It was incredible. I think I'm also very grateful to, for, for you to put the PDFs there because it just makes the whole difference, especially lots, that lots of poems were read uh, in the original language that some of us might not be familiar with it. So it was very special to look at the scripts uh, while you were reading. It, uh, for me, it helped transfer me to the world of those languages that I'm not necessarily familiar with. But uh, my question is uh, for Abner um, and, and his poem. It's, uh, it's very interesting that the way that you translated and the, the way that the uh, text was written in the original language where uh, the line breaks were in different order. Um, uh, am I right? And if it's that, uh, how do you see the difference between um, the translation and the original, uh, and why did you choose that kind of line break? Um, um, I, I just did it. I don't know how to answer. Um, you know, uh, with Kasi, uh, there's a certain flow. Like, even when I try not to rhyme, it rhymes. I, I don't know how. A lot of words just rhyme, and so um, um, with with Kasi, it's it's like it's like uh, I think about it in my head, and then I just say it out, and then it just rhymes. It just goes that way. Of course, I have to be very careful about how, like like if there's a meter, I have to make sure that not it's not too long. It has a certain you know it ends at a certain point because otherwise it just drags on. It's no longer 
poetic or whatever and um, with with the english version it's like easy for me because you know i speak english it's like it's it's very, i'm very comfortable with the language so uh i don't know if that answers your question but what i i really want to put through is that um in my own language it just happens whereas i have to put more effort in in english i have to actually think carefully in english because i did the translation myself so it wasn't somebody else who did it it would be interesting if somebody else translated it but that's how uh you know that's how it just flowed actually i i wasn't very i wasn't very i wasn't wondering too much about that like thank you for pointing that out now I, i'll become more conscious with right now <laughs> no it was uh yeah no, it was also such a uh great poem in english as well and it's very interesting to know that uh you were just trying to you you were not going detailed into making it into an english poem you just basically yeah. uh translated for um for just clarity for just uh um, just yeah it's like mm-hmm. uh, yeah more or less yeah kind of yeah but i think i must i must must extend this question to to afna afna do you think you are you are a bilingual poet right so yeah. for you both english and khasi are equally uh, you can manage yourself equally in the in both the languages more so or less yeah take, even though so do you take certain liberty while translating yeah of course um uh when i when i translate uh stuff it i i try to be a little bit more colloquial i don't i don't i'm not very strict or formal because there's a lot of people who like there's a lot of translators who are translating stuff from english into khasi Mm-hmm. but i i play around with it because you know i i find their 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 style to be a little bit too uptight so i i kind of play around with it i make it very informal i try to make it very colloquial like some conversational almost you know that's your own home you can, you can do anything that you want exactly oh we should try telling them that like <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 something that uh, has just you know i never used to write in in khasi for a very long time because um, mm-hmm. i you know i was exposed more to english, english. Uh, way more way way more and then mm-hmm. it was only i think in the last 5 years i think where i started uh, venturing only because uh, initially it started out because platforms like this you know people would mm-hmm. amazingly you know do stuff in their own languages and their own uh, vernaculars mm-hmm. i just loved it like really it it kind of really influenced me a lot uh being around people who were actually very proud and doing stuff which they were proud of in their own language and and you know experimenting as well which was amazing, amazing. so i realized that you know what am i doing i'm just because you know i'm not i'm not me like i can't i can't entirely express myself because i come from a culture which is predominantly rural and predominantly uh, tribal so mm-hmm. i i have to be able to speak with them you know i have to be able to use that also i can't uh, do anything else i so uh, slowly 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 i've i've kind of uh, started doing much more vernacular stuff um because of platforms like this as i was saying mm-hmm. uh for all our viewers i must inform here one thing that you must be uh, by now must be surprised to see that one of our participants is not here betsy mansapul vela she could not attend the the reading uh and she, she was not she was unwell even a couple of weeks back she had a very uh, a rough dengue and she was trying she was recovering from that disease and and i think something happened uh, like something uh, uh, related to that dengue infection she could not come with us. she couldn't join us tonight uh continuing the same question towards like all of you ranjit mentioned long time back uh, at 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 an interview he is uh, is a poly uh he's a multilingual reader and a monolingual writer so um like he he was talking about 
uh, Avna was talking about uh, the predominant tribal culture and and the thinking is his and and at the same time is more exposed to english as a, as a linguistic uh, i must say the, the, as the language in your case you are also you are a, you are a multilingual reader as you say you are from different uh, cultural backgrounds in india and you live in a polyglotic city and so my question is like as he mentioned English. So, what's your take English? Sorry, Shibro. What's my take on English? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, you, your your yeah. your your language. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll try and summarize. Basically, I don't really claim to speak from uh, any general view. I can only speak from who I am and my historical situation. My family yes. has spoken, written, and read English since 1790. Uh, which is 230 years. That's a lot longer than many Americans and uh, a lot of Australians. <laughs> so I get a little tired of uh, these tedious discussions of uh, oh, who is a native speaker and why is it a second language, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> these are usually camouflages for various forms of ignorance and or racism. So I have no time for them. Uh, uh, on the other hand, it's also true that I belong to a diasporic group within India. So we've traditionally been mm polyglot. And that has largely been the South Asian scenario. We've discussed this before. Mm -hmm. the, there was no word for mother tongue in any Indian language before the encounter with uh, European mythology. Yeah. So even the words we use for mother tongue in Indian languages, uh, Matra Bhasha, Mandari It's the composite word created. It's a calc. Yeah. It's a calc that comes off of Mutashpracha or, or uh, mother tongue. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, my situation is that I read and speak a multiplicity of languages and I find myself nourished by these languages. And for all kinds of historical reasons, my first language of articulation is English. But I would like to see it as an English that is constantly being uh, challenged by my other languages, that extends itself, that opens up. So I, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm, Delighted to hear of Avner's particular cultural and historical situation. And uh, to me, it works in a different way. Uh, why I mm -hmm. choose one language and why it's yet nourished and challenged by other languages. So I, I think we're, uh, in different ways, we embody the same kind mm -hmm. of scenario. And this is true of South Asia. I think it's time we emancipated ourselves from the phantoms of a nationalism that has long ago become quite useless and that we embrace the true complexity and richness of our, of what we inherit from our plural histories. Like we never had that tribal nationalism as per uh, Mr. Baba, as, as whom, he, whom he said a long time yep. back, he, he, he when, when, when Donald Trump came to power, he started coining that tribal nationalism thing. So we never had that. And we always had a multiplicity of many other things uh does anybody has any other question to any of our panelists yes can i can i speak can yes I speak? Please, please please well uh this is uh, professor ganguly uh from delhi uh, well i really appreciate i have liked let, let me let me introduce you sir it's my it will be my honor to introduce you uh, Professor Shama Prashad Ganguly is, is one of the most renowned and respected Hispanists in the India. And for us, he is a true inspiration. And he taught at, at the Jawaharlal Nehru University at the Center of Hispanic Studies. Please, sir. Well, well, well. Shubhra, you've been over generous. Thank you so much. But here today is the day for for, for these great poets. I have really liked the presentations. I'm really impressed. Uh, 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 at least, uh, you know, three of them I have not heard before. Uh, Ranjit Hoskode, yes, I have uh, read his poems. Yours, yes, of course. But, uh, you know, uh, Abner's uh, poems were, uh, were a discovery. And of course, uh, Martin as well as Carlos. I, I, 
obviously cannot go into all my curiosities here. Just one small curiosity. Uh, uh, and this is regarding the presentation by Carlos. Uh, Carlos, uh, well, I'm calling you Carlos. I, I, I treat you as a friend <laughs> from the Hispanic framework. So <laughs> please don't mind. Uh, I'm not using, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the the appellatives like Don and Senor. <laughs> uh, okay, now the there's uh, no need. Uh, <laughs> the 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 question, the curiosity this is a simple curiosity. So, you know, I am uh, very used to uh, reciting poems. Um, I'm not a poet myself, but I'm very uh, keen on 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 reciting poems from my own language which is bengali and of course spanish uh, i've done a lot of it and english as well uh khasi i cannot do <laughs> which is a big challenge and i was so impressed with this reading of uh, khasi poems also uh you know my question is your in your presentation you know uh, there is a, there is a a double presentation uh, one is this, of course, your uh, the the poem itself, and the other is the images. Now, supposing I were to uh, recite this poem, uh, you know, the 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 images would be necessary. No, uh, I cannot recite this because half of the meaning, because of the designing of the poem, it, it's a fantastic idea. I really appreciate the idea, but is it a very personal kind of a poem? Because a poem is not. Once you write it, it is also for you throw it open to the public, you throw it open to the poetry lovers. So it is my poem as well. You know, I want to recite it, but I can't recite it without these images. Uh, and when, how can I get these images? And there are so many other meanings. For example, your uh, the speed, the velocity uh, at each of the image that you was you were giving. They were very different. I might have a different tone. And so the images may have a different meaning. So uh, what do you say? I mean, uh, is it a very personal poem? Can I recite it if I want to? Because half of the meaning will be lost because I won't have the images. So what is, uh, you know, this is a fantastic idea that you have uh, given. But I want to know from you, uh, what would you prescribe for a person who want to recite this poem <laughs> without the images? Uh, can you can you give me some kind of a, a, a response? Yes, absolutely. And thank you so much for that question. Um, as a clarification, I mean, what, what I did there was just to mix or what to was to put together two different books. So, I mean, you can have them separately or you can have them together. It's something that I, I tend to do during this kind of readings or presentations or maybe because I'm just kind of taking advantage of this platform that allows me to do that. If we were like uh, in a live setting, probably if there was like a projector available, I would like to do something similar. If the technology was not available, maybe I just would read the poems. Uh, but I mean, I think uh, the writing uh, or like composing a poem is one thing, but th but then uh, that uh, energy or or that uh, the life that, that 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 you can give to a poem can can be extended in the in the performance in the delivery, and uh, and I think it's a very important aspect of of like of poetry is how do you deliver uh, your creations or your ideas. Uh, and yeah, of course, I mean, you can give uh, some other meanings or you can uh, make it more complex. Uh, and in, in those terms, I mean, if, if you going to read then the poems in, in, in the book by yourself, maybe some, you're going to discover some other things. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, 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 in that capability on the, or, or in that flexibility uh, the poem may have, you know, like multiple layers that are constantly fighting over or like uh like i don't know just uh, the, the, those the, those different combinations that can be achieved uh i i like that so uh, uh yeah i mean uh, if if um i usually you know try to uh the, the visual aspects uh, of, of of the poem uh is also very important to me 
uh, and, 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 and as you were saying, you know, the rhythm, uh, the pace, uh, particularly in this poem, th this one is very repetitive. And uh, although it's, it's composed of, of different parts that respond to a particular topic, uh, it kind of like, you know, follows the, the, the same structure. So I, I kind of like to impose a certain interpretation or, or a, cer a certain reading through the, 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 the way uh, I deliver the poem, the way that the speed or the, uh, the intonation, the inflection of the voice, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, I think those are tools that you can or you cannot use. I mean, it's up to, to the poet. There are, there are many poets that I guess they don't care much about these things. Uh, I personally care and, and I like to experiment um, a bit with this because I have the feeling, this is a very personal thing, but I have the, the feeling that sometimes uh, poetry readings can be very boring, you know, and, and you have to be like a really good poet in order to keep the attention uh, and the intensity alive. That's a job that uh, not all the poets are uh, called to do. I mean, they're, they're some poets, they just want to read their poems and that's particularly fine, that's okay. Uh, but some others like to include different elements and uh, some people think those elements are distractors, you know, that they, they do a disservice to the poem. Uh, and, well, I don't know, I, I guess that's that's for the public to judge. If, if, no, but, if but the I, I think, Carlos, that, you know, you uh, without those images, uh, much of the meaning of the poem will be lost. I mean, I, I thought that it added to the meaning of the, its significance, the intensity of the mm -hmm. poem, uh, you know, it, 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 it was quite enhanced, to be, you know, it, it, these are uh, documents uh, from the CIA, you know, uh, 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 archives, and, you know, they have been uh, blackened and, uh, uh, you know, it always occurs that probably the words that you are saying, they could be put in those places where, <laughs> which have been blackened. You know, there are so many different ways of, you know, derivation of meaning out of those images mm -hmm. itself. So I thought that uh, well, the next uh, the uh, corollary question would be, can those images be substituted by others? I'm not sure. I mean, may, I, 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 I would like to try uh, with, with Chile project, the erasure project. It, it's particularly challenged because, well, I mean, if you're interested, you can find that book uh, free online. It's, it's located in a website called uh, Gauss PDF. And okay. uh, so I can send you the link, or I can share the link uh, in the comments. Uh, in okay. The, um, Is in the chat. Share, the, share the link. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you so much. Sorry, I have mm -hmm. taken a lot of your time. No, Sorry. it's fine. Thank you so much for your question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. Muchas gracias. You're very welcome. <laughs> De nada. Since we are coming to almost to the end of the session, uh, I would like to ask a question since we are, we are uh, dealing with multiplicity of cultures and languages. Martin, this question would be for Martin Rodriguez, the owner, and who is himself, as he has told, he is, uh, he has, he dealt with different nationalities and he deals with different identities. He's a Peruvian by birth. He, he, grew, he grew up a, a part of his life. He grew up uh, at some part of time in the United States, and then he moved to moved to Spain. Now he lives between uh, Peru and Spain. So how how do you uh, how do you just gather all your identities together? Are you are you a Peruvian? Are you a Spanish? Are you an American? Who are you? Are you all of them? Yeah. I'm American from the continent. I, I, I don't like I don't I don't like the I don't like how even the Spanish speakers uh, give away the whole whole continent with a word when they when they say Americano, referring to to, to people from the United States, right? First of all, uh, and then I don't see any uh, problem being having two nationalities. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you're a reader, you have the mm -hmm. privilege of, of having hundreds of nationalities available. If you if you if you read uh, Lipo, 
if you mm -hmm. read uh, an African poet, you are at least for the time of, of that uh, reading, you, you you belong to that culture. So that's that's wonderful. That's that's a real privilege. And uh, specifically, the it's idea lovely, of it's not, it's not new at all. I mean, I'm I feel I'm I'm. Spanish Peruvian, Peruvian Spanish, in a very, in a very uh, long tradition that starts with uh, Inca Garcilaso de la Vega. Exactly. Which starts with the with the chronicle writers Spanish in America. Uh, all the uh, colonial literature. So it's very. It's car. It's this very uh, short-sighted thing to, mm -hmm. to think that that everything starts with our time, with our with modernity. Okay. Moder that. Modernity, for example, is is, is just uh, a great uh, issue, a great fact that, among other things, allows us to be here, sharing these thoughts, which was impossible 150 years ago, but at the same time, it's misleading because, I mean, uh, one of the symbols of this like, last book of, my, of mine is, is Venice, and Venice represents many things, but among one of the best things that the Venice represents is the printing. The, the, the first a printing industry that gather all the all the knowledge from the world within even <laughs> including Asia was in Venice so I mean That's these true. things uh, tend to repeat themselves and we are we are also part of that I mean uh, romanticism and, and modernity has led us to believe that we are special yes we are special because we feel our own skin we have our own eyes, but at the same time, this connects with whole humanity, and we have to accept that, and we have to appreciate that, and we have to have to work with with the strength, but at the same time with humility. Mm. That's the only thing that, uh, for example, the, the, the great religions of, of India. I mean, this so. Uh, Actual, so to, just to understand the otherness, mm. the, plur the plurality of the human experience. I mean, so that that's what I feel that uh, my 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 purpose as a as a writer, my my, my goal as a citizen. I, I I I I feel it as a as a privilege, and I and I I tend to to do something for the for the people that come next. Because I, I sometimes see friends of mine, culture, even good writers, that are friends of mine. We walk, we walk, walking through the streets, and we see a, 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 a Spanish kid from a Chinese background, and they and they get surprised, and they say, "Oh, this kid speaks Spanish without any accent." Yeah, but he's. He was born in Madrid the same as you. <laughs> so <laughs> how can, I mean, it's so weird that you are not able to understand that, right? So that's, that's I think, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 as a matter of taste, I tend to, to privilege uh, uh, readings of writers, works of art that try to connect all these uh, different cultures, all these, all these different voices, right? Like, mm -hmm. for example, one of the, like, uh, Elliot, the, the Wasteland, mm -hmm. a, a monument of modern uh, poetry, and it, it has quotes Hindi, in Dutch, in, in German. In, in, so that, that's it. I mean, it's not, 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 nothing new. We, ha we just have to make it new again, like, like, like Pound said. We have to re remind us that we, we belong to, to a single planet called Earth. We are the residents of Earth. All right. 
thank you so much everybody thank you so much again yeah. to the embassy of mexico to instituto uh, cervantes and to to everybody all of all the listeners today i must announce one more thing here that this year's above we will uh, we will continue with the with this digital project of ever american voices we will carry on with our interview series with uh, master spanish writers spanish speaking poets or the poets of different languages of the hispanic countries and the poets of india uh, and of course next year we hope to have uh, a normal as the students say offline poetry festival <laughs> um, a normal poetry festival here in delhi at at, at mm. cervantes um, thank you everybody thank you for being with us thank you for supporting us uh, have a good night and have a nice day <laughs> in chile and and in, and in madrid Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for for thank having you. us and thank you, thank so you to all the people who join hope to see you soon. thanks take care it's marvelous to be here yeah. bye hello be safe hello, hello. Take care. Take care.